Welcome to PerfectVariableAnnuity.com. Uh, this is our first video in a series of six videos that you find on the home page. The title of this uh, one is Keep It Simple. And the real objective here is to kind of talk about through these six components why we think the perfect variable annuity is what works for you as an investor. Now, I want to set the, the, the table straight in the fact that what I'm not talking about is one specific annuity. What I am talking about is how you, an investor, can build the perfect variable annuity that suits your goals, your lifestyle, your objectives, and what you're trying to accomplish. And I think that really, in a nutshell, en encapsulates what we're all trying to do when we put money into a variable annuity. So the first thing I want to look at is what is a, a variable annuity? A variable annuity is nothing more than a tax-deferred vehicle that walks, talks, and acts very similar to a mutual fund. It is not a mutual fund. The assets are called unit values versus net asset value shares. And so you own units versus shares of a, of a mutual fund. And what it does is it allows you to invest in a pool of assets. Uh, they're managed. Most of them are managed just like a mutual fund by mutual fund companies. And the whole gist of the matter really is for you as an investor to be able to enjoy the benefits of tax-deferred growth. Variable annuities were created in 1952, and the whole creation, if you look at when the Senate and the House of Representatives uh, formed this part of the tax code, what they very specifically stated was that the benefits were for tax deferral over long periods of time, and they took, you know, the studies were based on various return assumptions in conjunction with different rates of taxation. And what they wanted to offer was the investor a way to enjoy the benefits of long term investing, but not in, be penalized or handicapped by the taxes. And if any of you have been invested in mutual funds, you understand the capital gain distributions at the end of the year, the dividends are all taxable to you in the year that they're earned, where with a variable annuity, they are deferred until uh, you actually take the money out. One uh, pitfall has always been said that with a mutual fund, your maximum tax is the cap, especially at 12, if you hold it 12%. 12 months or longer is that you have long-term capital ta gains tax treatment versus a variable annuity, the distribution is always considered to be ordinary income. Uh, so that is uh, something you have to factor into uh, the decision relative to the long-term growth cycle. But I think when you dig down and you look at a variable annuity, a variable annuity is really built for you to accumulate wealth on a tax-deferred basis. No other reason, no other thing. And then ultimately what you want to be able to do is convert that growth into income. And so what I've done is actually uh, construct a little bit of, a, uh, of an example that lets you look at that, you know, if we play uh, the game of what if, and I, let's look at it this way. What if you had $250,000 today and wanted to defer the taxation on the growth over the next 10 years, not adding any money? We're just going to make it simple. So we take, we put in $250,000, and we let it compound for 10 years. And at the end of the 10 years, we're going to look at the tax deferred accumulation of the assets. So if you invest the money over that period at an average rate of return of, let's say, 8% per annum, the balance would be $554,910. Remember, your cost basis is $250,000 because that's what you put in for tax purposes, and now you can determine how you want to generate your income. So in other words, we talk about right there on the screen uh, that we're doing this because we want tax-deferred growth with future income. And so keeping it simple, that's exactly what we did. We put it in there. We uh, actively manage, which we'll talk in step number two about active money management. But we put the asset in. We actively manage it. We average an 8% rate of return over 10 years with $554,910. And now we get to determine what do we want. So when I look at this, you know, putting your money into a variable annuity uh, for the sole purpose of tax deferred growth, I think there's three things you got to look at. One is that you need plenty of investment options to choose from 
that encompasses the universe of sectors and asset classes. And I'll talk about this in two and in some of the other uh, pieces of the six steps here that we laid out of objectives to the variable annuity. But look at what's going to happen relative to that in universe of sectors and asset classes. Secondly, have the ability to switch between those assets and choices as often as you like without limitations. I think that's very important that you, you, you're not branded as a market timer. If you want to buy the S&P 500 index fund today, as an example, and you want to sell it two weeks from now, you don't want the variable annuity company telling you you can't do that. You want to have control of the asset to the point that you can make choices, and there are annuities that allow you to do that. And then thirdly is have access to the money without penalty or surrender charges and I'm, I'm a big proponent of buying variable annuities that do not have surrender charges. You don't know uh, if your goals will change. You don't know if the markets will change. Uh, so you, you go into this with simple goals in mind that I want to have tax-deferred growth so that I have future income. And so you're, ta you're tagging this with future date income planning, and you're saying at the future date, I want this to convert to income for me. All of us have changes in our lives. You want to have something that has flexibility. When you buy a variable annuity that has a 7% or 7-year surrender charge attached to it or 8 or 6 or 5, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen over the next 5 years as much as we'd like to, pro you know, prognosticate that we do, but having total liquidity, total flexibility of owning a variable annuity product, I think that really is a key. Uh, from my view. And then lastly, I'll throw in here a bonus uh, point is that be charged the least amount of fees possible or a flat fee would be great. And there are low fee annuities that are offered by companies like Fidelity and Vanguard. And there are flat fee annuities that are offered by companies like Jefferson National. And those are the kind of things that I want to that I would look at. All three of those companies do not have surrender charges. Uh, they give you uh, some flexibility to complete flexibility uh, within the asset choices themselves. And I think that's very important. The other thing that comes back that I hear sometimes that people will say to me is, well, what about the credit rating of the insurance companies? Yes, that is important. You don't want to buy uh, uh, an investment product from a company that is not financially solvent. But if the company is rated uh, B, B plus, A minus, A, I'm not going to get all that enamored with it as long as the company has relatively strong earnings, strong balance sheet, because the assets of which you invest into these funds are, are segregated assets from the insurance company. In other words, they don't possess the asset and they don't it's not domiciled on their on the balance of their books or on their balance sheet of the company meaning that it resides with the, the company itself. In other words, let's say you had a PIMCO uh, total return bond fund inside of the, the annuity as a selection. That money actually resides with PIMCO. It's not with the annuity company or the insurance company. It's segregated and apart from them. So if the company itself goes under, your assets are still made whole. You still have access to the funds and you would be made whole uh, relative to the asset you put into the annuity product, including the growth, uh, would come back to you. So you do, you're not going to lose those assets uh, from a variable annuity. And I think that's really a key point uh, when we look at this. So as we talk about, you know, the, the idea of this is keep it simple. I like to add to the end of that, keep it so simple that you can do it. In other words, you want to have something that you actually will act upon instead of something acting upon you or you getting paralysis of analysis because you don't know how to actually deal with this animal that you've purchased. And I think that's very important uh, for you as an investor. So I think when we, if we go back to the scenario with $250,000, we put it in, uh, we accumulate or amass at 8%, $554,910, cost basis $250,000, or roughly half of this we've already paid taxes on. The other half we would take out in an income stream. So when we get to part two here, which is the future income, so now we're 10 years down the road, and we want to take income 
there are two ways to do it. One is you could take a systematic withdrawal from the variable annuity, but remember those assets are still invested in the markets. In other words, they're invested in stocks, they're invested in bonds, they still will have market volatility, they will have drawdowns or losses that could impact the uh, life stream of the income. The question you have is are you comfortable with that flex that uh, volatility and flexitivity of the asset itself that you're comfortable taking your income that way a second choice would be to buy a product that guarantees you the income for the rest of your life for as long as you will live one way to do that is to buy what's called a single premium immediate annuity uh, and you would receive that m income every month based on your current age uh, just to dispel the myth that if you die early the insurance company does not necessarily get your money under that scenario you can use uh, a lot of ways to set these up you can use what's called a joint life annuity if you're married uh, it would survive both spouses income needs so you have you get it for a joint life <clears throat> the second component is is that you can have make sure that it pays out uh, prior to death uh, so there's ways to deal with the options of these on the payout. So don't get hung up that the insurance company is going to get your money. Uh, it can be averted by just making a couple of selection choices as you go through there. So you want to look at the do you want guaranteed income or do you still want to accept market volatility? And I think those are two things that you will have to address. And we'll cover some of that under Part 3, under maximizing your income. But if you were to take that and you bought a, a single premium immediate annuity, your income base off of that is factored on the $554,910. And to me, that says that you would have on a single, if you did all of it, you converted all of the money to a single premium immediate annuity you're gonna have roughly thirty to thirty five thousand dollars of income per year or around twenty five hundred to about twenty nine hundred dollars per month of income for the rest of your life that you could never outlive it's gonna be based on actuarial tables your age uh... your your are you married single you know how do you want it to be distributed so all of those will impact what the actual income stream are and part of this is we'd be happy to give you a quote on what and how much that would be. Uh, obviously, there's no obligation to you for any of that. So the focus is, you know, finding and getting the data that you need to make intelligible decisions. Now, if I want to go back to one other thing with annuities, and that is, is that variable annuities do offer income riders. In other words, you can get what's called a guaranteed minimum income benefit. Uh, meaning that when you get to age the 10 years out in, in this example, that you would be you could take a guaranteed income from the annuity. And the, the difference there is they're going to guarantee you a base rate of return. Uh, right now they're running between 5 and 6 percent are the guarantees for 10 years, so they're going to guarantee you that regardless of what the market does. And that sounds great on the surface, but the challenge that I've got with that, is that why are you investing in equities if you don't believe that you're going to get better than five to six percent and if you aren't actively managing the money to get more than that you really are better off buying a fixed annuity to start with you ready you're, you're, there's other things you could buy and or invest your money into that would be more beneficial than trying to put your money into an annuity just for the guaranteed minimum income benefit. That's not why you buy a, minimum, buy a variable annuity. Riders, which we'll talk about in Part 4, are for fixed annuities. They're not for variable annuities. That's just my opinion. And that, you know, when you look at this, the average rider, if you're married and you want a joint benefit, the average rider is one and a quarter percent per year fee charged to the assets under management. So in our case, we put in $250,000. They're going to charge one and a quarter percent on that. Well, what does that mean to your money? If that's the only rider that you added to the annuity, it's going to come out to $502,415 or the cost of that rider is $52,495 over that same 10-year period, or about $5,249 a year. 
that's expensive from my view. I, that's just me. I, that's just me speaking. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't do it. I'm just trying to say think about what the cost of that is to you over the long term. The additional part of that is when you buy an annuity that has a guaranteed minimum income benefit, there are other uh, fees associated with these. They're called mortality and expense fees or the guarantee death benefit, which is going to be another 75 to 100 basis points on average on top of that. So you tack on that on top of the one and a quarter percent. You know, you start tacking these on, you're going to get to two, two and a half, three percent pretty quickly. And when you do that, the return on asset actually goes a lot further down. And that's something that we all have to consider or factor into this when we're looking at it. And to put it in perspective, if you took that annuity minus 2.5% in fees, that would come out to $432,769. And you can see now that we've gone from 554910 to 432 The cost factor inside of these contracts, I mean, it's not real rocket science to start figuring out. You're paying $122,140 over 10 years. That means you're paying $12,000 a year, $1,000 a month for the privilege of having a guaranteed best benefit, a guaranteed income rider, and a few other little bells and whistles that we're going to tag into these things. That really is not what this is about. So why did we come back to the premise of the perfect variable annuity? The perfect variable annuity is one, very simply, that allows you to grow your money on a tax-deferred basis, talk about future income, and then make a decision at that point when you want income. Do you want to buy a single premium immediate annuity, or do you want to turn on some type of systematic withdrawal from your account? These are simple issues that you can decide each and every day that you own your annuity but the key to me is deciding up front that I want liquidity that I don't I don't want surrender charges I want to be able to manage the money effectively and I don't want somebody charging me as excess fees for quote unquote guarantees that I may never use and statistically it's already being shown that less than 60 are more than 60 percent of investors who own a variable annuity never exercise or benefit from the riders. And I think that's a very important thing uh, for you to understand. So I'm going to leave part number one there. Have a simple goal, tax-deferred growth for future income. We'll come back in parts two, three, four, five, and six, and we'll kind of put it all together. But I think that the key to, that I want you to walk away from of this particular uh, segment is the perfect variable annuity is one that accomplishes your goals. It's not a specific annuity. It's one that gets you where you want to be financially. We'll leave it there. And I, I think that as you go through the other five components of this, you'll find out how easy it is and how simple you can make it to build your own perfect variable annuity.